you should have your stations set on a classical station, a jazz station, a rock station, all the different styles. You should have your stations and you should be listening to all those so you can hear what are the mixes. Where are the drums in the jazz stations and where are the drums in the rock stations? Are they up front in the volume or are they in the back in the volume? Where is the kick drum uh, sound in the jazz station? Where is the kick drum sound on the rock station? You know, if you want to stay on top of what you're doing, you've got to see what everybody else is doing. Rock, jazz, classical, the wave, that's a whole different style. So you get these different uh, stations and now you're listening to the different styles and you're listening now you're hearing a classical station, you say, boring. No, 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 no. Listen to the sound. Can you tell me if it's a violin playing or a viola playing? You need to be able to tell by listening. To the, what is the instrument you're hearing? Can any of you tell me what an oboe sounds like? Can you tell me the difference between an oboe and an English horn? The English horn is an octave lower, but it's the same sound, but it's an octave lower. Now you know about it. Now you know you need to know that. It's important because if you're mixing and something's too loud, do you know which fader to quickly bring down? Or are you going to bring down the solo voice? Do you know the difference between a trumpet and a trombone sound by hearing it? Even so, do you know the difference between a trumpet and a flugelhorn? Now do you know the difference between a flugelhorn in the lower register and a trombone in the higher register? Could you tell the difference between a French horn by hearing it and a trombone? These are the things that you've got to start paying attention to. That's why you listen to the classical station. So you're identifying instruments you don't know. You need to do this because when you hear the stuff that you hear on the pop stations, much of the time it's not just the four-piece group you're listening to. Much of the time they've gone into the studios and they've overdubbed orchestral background. Well, what if you're the guy that gets to record all that? That means you got to mix the orchestra. Well, you mix the drums and the rock drum. What are you going to do? Say, well, I don't know how to do violin, so I got to give up the job at a hundred bucks an hour to somebody else. How many would do that? Right. <laughs> so when the orchestra comes in for you to record the overdubs, do you know what kind of mic to put on an oboe? And do you know the difference by, by hearing violins? Can you tell them the difference between them and the violas? Can you tell the difference between them and the celli? Sound, just by hearing it, because you're just going to hear it. They're all out there. You don't know who's who. All you got is microphones on everybody. You're hearing it all now. Now you got to know, well, are you going to mix the celli louder than the violins? Well, let's hope not, or somebody's liable to shoot you. <laughs> Violin players will come in and that's never done. Right, so these are things you have to know if you're going to do this. And then some of us would say, well, I'm only interested in the, the rap thing. As much as we love it, rap is not here forever. When I was starting in the business in the early 60s, we were playing The Twist. And The Twist is gone, dude. It's gone. Nobody even wants to hear the word. So I'm telling you that styles change. Your education should allow you to transcend styles. Your education should allow you to adapt your knowledge to any style you point it at. That's what your goal should be. You should learn to apply these techniques to all the styles. Because that's what it's about.